This is the day the Lord has made.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Thank you for joining us for Mass on a rainy day here in New York. And those of you uh, watching live streamed, again, thank you for praying with us. And today, a special shout out to Mom in New Jersey. Love you forever, Mom. Right now, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred liturgy, we pause and call to mind our sins. We call to mind God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to your will and serve you in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom, Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. It is I, Paul, who am telling you that if you have yourselves circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I declare to every man who has himself circumcised that he is bound to observe the entire law. You are separated from Christ. You who are trying to be justified by the law you have fallen from grace. For though, or through the Spirit, by faith, we await the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. Let your, your mercy, mercy come, come to, to me, me o, Lord. o Lord. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. Lord. Take not the word of truth from my mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. Let your mercy come to me, O, o Lord. Lord. And I will keep your law continually, forever and forever. Let your, Let mercy, your mercy come, come to, me, to me, O Lord. Lord. And I will walk at liberty, because I seek your precepts. Let your mercy, Let your mercy come, come, to, come me, to me, O Lord. Lord. And I will delight in your commands, which I love. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. Lord. And I will lift up my hands to your commands and meditate on your statutes. Let your mercy, Let mercy come, come to me, O Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. Jesus entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that Jesus did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said, Oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools. Did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But to as but as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a, a saying called Pascal's Wager. This is from a French uh, writer, philosopher. He wrote that belief is a wise wager. Granted that faith cannot be proved, what harm will come to you if you gamble on its truth and it proves false? If you gain, you gain all. If you lose, you lose nothing. Well, I hope that was not uh, Mr. Pascal's uh, final word about faith. I like to imagine that he was trying to get someone to put a toe in, to try it, to get even a little near to belief. Pascal's wager. Maybe it makes some sense from a betting man's point of view. But faith, faith makes demands. It demands a change of heart, a change of life, a change in the way we look at the world. In poker, when you're betting, there's a dramatic move that's called all in. All the chips in front of you, you push to the middle and challenge the other players. All in. We've been hearing from St. Paul to the Galatians. And remember, we heard Thursday from chapter one, the way he starts the letter, not with his usual, you beautiful people. He starts with, you foolish Galatians. Hmm. Well, the Galatians are hedging their bets. They think that they must insist upon following the law of Moses as well as following Jesus. Here in chapter five, Paul doubles down on that. He is all in, and he's asking the Galatians and us if we are all in. So he says, you who are trying to be justified by the law and you cannot follow it perfectly. If that's what you're doing, you have fallen from grace. I'm very glad that Paul ends this section with good news. Through the Spirit, we have access to God's righteousness. And this can be done only in faith, working through love. So the question, are you all in with St. Paul? Are you wholeheartedly giving yourself to Jesus? Sometimes a Christian will intentionally or perhaps unconsciously hold something back, uh, resentment, something about the way you do business, could be anything, could be the way you drive. But as we 
hear the gospel and respond. We ask for the grace to know our sins, to identify these ways that we hold back and surrender that to God so that we, like St. Paul, will be all in with Jesus. Please stand. Let us continue in prayer for our needs and the needs of the whole church. For ourselves, that we will be good and faithful witnesses to the risen Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our country, as we prepare for elections, we pray to the Lord. For Jean Scarangela and for all who have gone before us in faith, rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick for whom we are asked to pray, we pray to the Lord. For these prayers we have spoken and those that remain in the heart. We pray to the Lord. Father, with confidence in your mercy, we put all our needs before you in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, grant us a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will, gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands 
as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and saints, we declare your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you hold us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of love together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all who serve in your name. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and all distress as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power Lord, 
Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Bless you and bring you to everlasting life. Body of Christ. Amen. 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 Body of Christ. Don't forget to say amen. I always do. They always give me shit for that up there. <laughs> I have a message for you. I have the cure for coronavirus. You will be canonized in 122 years, and I'm the first of the seven to arrive. Okay. Body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, as we benefit from participating in heavenly things, may we be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit remain with you forever. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I'll be in the back available for confession.